Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this review, green screen in Premiere Pro. Now green screen is the process of removing the green screen background and putting yourself into a new location. The one thing I want to I don't know, maybe give you a good feeling about is everybody has problems with green screen. Even major features in Hollywood, they have problems. And you think by now they would have worked it out. No, green screen is tough. But there are some things that you can do to, um, to fix that. First of all, use the proper green. If you're painting, there are proper, proper greens out there. And the green shouldn't be glowing or bright. The green needs to be... Um, flat. The flatter and more accurate the lighting, the better. Premiere Pro's got a great tool called Ultra to do green screen that uh, I think is pretty good. Now the footage I'm using I shot on purpose to give me problems. It has green plants in it, it has wine glasses, it has my buddy Steve Liebig wearing glasses and his hair all over the place. It's a, a good example of a tough job to shoot. The other important thing to understand is this footage is from the Canon C300 camera, which has enormous amounts of, of great color information. When you're doing this with DSLRs, you're going to get uh, results that are based on the compression in that format. So they will vary, but let's go have a look. So here I have the footage above some other footage and I've got a couple of different backgrounds that I can use. <clears throat> to me, it's very important to green screen with the footage on the new background. Don't do this against black or white or transparency unless that's the final result. So in my effects, I'm going to search for Ultra. I'll just type in Ultra. It's in the keying family here. Double click on that and it opens up. These are my effects controls. If you don't see them, they're stuck behind here and you need to click on the clip. Here's Ultra Key and there is one eyedropper. You only get one eyedropper. Click in here and find the most even green that we can. Click inside, boom. Now that looks pretty good and when I hit play, this is an accelerated effect and it plays right away. But you'll notice that there's a bit of stuff happening over here on the right. Sometimes you can get away with just changing the setting from default to aggressive and it chops that away. And for a lot of people, this is gonna be, you know, a quick down and dirty uh, way of working. I am losing a bit of the flowers in here, but if you weren't familiar with that shot, uh, then you probably wouldn't even notice. The hair is pretty good. The wine glass, pretty good. The, it's really the reflections in there that I'm getting. So I think that's a, um, a respectable job, but we can go in here and tweak this. And there's four different areas to tweak the matte generation. That's the black and white key that's happening behind here. The matte cleanup, spill suppression, if, if green or blue, if you're using a blue screen, is spilling onto the subject. And then overall color correction. Let's go into matte generation. And here we can change um, transparency, highlight shadow, tolerance, and pedestal. Now, Trying to change it by just looking at the color composite is not the best way to go. If you go for the alpha channel in here, you can immediately see what is uh, pure white. So this white stuff is going to stay. The black stuff is going to go away. And you can see we've definitely got some problems over here in this material. And we even have some of this material so low that it's, it's, we're going to have to crop it out. And I'll show you an easy way to crop that. So what I like to do is start uh, changing things like transparency. So as I start moving that to the right or to the left, I'm either going to add or subtract different parts uh, of that. So I'm going to leave that right now. I might come back to that. And uh, I'll leave that set where it is. Um, the overall highlights, if you start moving this around, you're going to see that you're uh, brightening up the uh, black areas. And over here, this is the shadow. And this is usually the place where you can start to really work on this stuff. So I can bring this down and start bringing in the shadows. But notice the flowers and the hair. If you push this down too far, now I'm going to be punching holes in the hair over there. Um, I can also change the overall tolerance uh, of this too. So if I start moving the tolerance around... You see the tolerance all the way up to 100. 
and the pedestal, that's the midpoint in here. You can see that I'm now starting to get rid of the, the uh, black over here or the gray over here to solid black and I'm not bringing in his hair. The, the, these are a little bit uh, troublesome, but gotta remember, this is green. I purposely shot this to give myself the toughest job. Now in matte cleanup, this is where we can choke, soften, add contrast, and a midpoint inside here. So they're independent of each other. And if we zoom in, let's zoom in to 150 over here. And if we go back to looking at our composite on here, um, you notice that if I start playing with the choke amount, it starts to choke in. So it's, it's cutting off that outside area. And that's what you want when you've got a fringe inside here. So um, you may or may not want to, to do that. You don't, I wouldn't do it too much. And here's where we can soften the edge. So if we've hardened that edge up a little bit, we can soften the edge inside here. And then we can add an overall contrast and that will bring that area back a little bit as we can add some contrast in there. Uh, and then we can set the overall midpoint inside here. Um, I've already played with this and know that I want these to be zero. And now if we go back to looking at the, the whole thing, let's go back to our alpha composite. And let's go back to our transparency and I've got a few numbers in here that I like. And now let's go look at our final composite. So there it is. We do have this part, which was originally in the, um, the background. The green screen actually didn't make its, its way all the way up there. So uh, the easiest way to do that, you don't have to use a garbage mat or a crop. Go to the opacity settings. Zoom out a little bit here, a little bit more, and grab the opacity. Um, mask and draw a Bezier mask in here. So I'm just going to, I'm selecting the area I want to keep. And you see that it removes that little thing right there. All right, let's go back to fit inside there. And you can see with a couple of tweaks inside, we've got a pretty respectable job. Now when I turn that background off and put another background in, I can easily start to uh, play with different composites. So few things to remember, Ultra Key is the key inside Premiere Pro. It really likes well shot stuff. Um, and make sure you put your footage over a background right away. And if you've got problems, then, you know, just you're in a family of, of a lot of people that are dealing with problems with green screen. For most people, a quick down and dirty click on there uh, will work. If you are having really, pro uh, if you're having, um, if your footage sucks, basically, then Ultra Key won't work. You need After Effects for that, and I'll show you that in another reveal. All right. Hopefully you found this informative. If you had, then please click on the subscribe link to Video Revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.